You know what time it is. It's home time. We are finally heading back to the Schmuseum from a wet and miserable day here at the Nürburgring, wrapping up the end of a month and a half on the road in my AMG GT Black Series. This car has been to so many places, but today we of course have these two for the drive, but we also have the Zenvo here, which is currently at Vulcan Alpha, Misha's new setup, and we need to load it with turbo transport to take all three back. Later today, if all goes to plan, we'll have all three of the Schmeermobiles that have been part of this mega snow tour adventure back at base. While the car of choice for the tour was the GT Black Series, the 296 GTS has been out here as well for some laps on the ring. It has been mega to break its duck as a Schmeermobile and also the Zembo, which was over at the factory in Prasto, Denmark, that we took to Classic Car House to drive there and then shipped over here to be at the event. So we've had this logistics chaos I'm going to say. In fact, if we get home later today and everything has gone entirely to plan, that is quite the success because this has been a marathon journey which we can talk about a little bit later on. I'm just hoping right now that the sun is going to come through because otherwise loading the Zembo in a minute is going to be miserable. We're setting off from here literally right underneath the Nürburgring sign on the boulevard but obviously the cars are locked and loaded with a ton of luggage and now some stickers as well including our visit up to the arctic circle it is crazy to think in winter time this car went to both the arctic circle and some laps of the nürburgring and down to italy and drove a ton of miles more on that a little bit later because we have a long journey ahead of us hi guys i'm shmi hello and welcome back to the channel where today we're getting the shmi mobiles back home <laughs> Right, let's get this started. Let's get today's wet and miserable journey underway from here. Electric startup to the Schmuseum via the Eurotunnel, of course. Let's have some engine running. There we go. V6 sound built up and go get firstly the Zembo. Away we go. This is very much calmer than the last days out here, but just a short little run basically around the block back to where we were. We'll go get the Zembo with this. Then we will reunite with all of the cars because we haven't actually taken a picture of all three of these together. But we were intending this morning to go drive some laps. As you can see, however, the weather is not exactly suitable. The GT Black Series looks very cool going past us there. Nice. As we come back to the Nürburgring Boulevard and then around past the sign towards Vulcan Alpha. I have to be honest also, it's probably the first time that this car has been in the wet mode on the Manatino. Um, in these conditions, 800 and something horsepower, it's not exactly best suited to race. Probably be quite a lot of fun in CT off, but we're not going for that today. It's so miserable. But with the weather forecast to be like this, obviously nobody's come out because what would be the point in being here? It's a complete and total mess. Then here at Vulcan Alpha, after the weekend's activities, it was very busy here the last couple of days, it's time to get this out. I would say it was clean and tidy, but to be honest, it's not immaculate. So it's not the worst that I'm about to drive it out into the torrential rain. And then when it gets back home, it can have a proper tidy up. So let me hop in here, which is of course now left-hand drive, not right-hand drive from the 296. Got to think about that one. And start this up and pull it out and see where we end up. <laughs> Fast forward, we have all three cars here and a lot of people here as well, <laughs> but we made it around um, before we load the Zembo into the trailer here at the Nürburgring Boulevard. But the first time actually we've had all three in a line together, three very different cars, the brutal hypercar or mega car, the track weapon, and to be honest, a brilliant road car that's also a lot of fun to drive around the Nürburgring, three bright colors, three different brands, three different nationalities in fact with the cars. I would have said three different engines. Technically, you could say twin turbo, twin supercharged, hybrid twin turbo, um, hybridized, absolute brutal power, and the track weapon. So we should get the Zembo very quickly into the trailer, which is just here, awaiting loading, and get it on the way. And then when we're on the way, I'll talk a little bit about why it's being trailered, not just driving. Nice, Porsches everywhere. Porsches, M cars, Nürburgring life, raindrops on the lens, 
Can't really do anything about that today. It is what it is. Time, therefore, to get loading, which means Brad is in the Zembo. Tony is at the ready. Turbo transport at the ready. We just moved the other two over there for the moment to go and get this lined up. I'm ready to go back home. Lift system time. It's always kind of funky to see that. All right, nice easy process when you've got multiple people here who know what to do. Tony guides, Brad does as instructed, mirrors are folded, in it goes. One smooth run straight in. Sounding amazing. Just like that. You can tell we've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy. Done. Simple. Nice one. Look away for a second and a 992 RS turns up. Now we've got big wings everywhere. There are so many around here, but obviously super cool and great to drive here. So it makes total sense. Two different Nürburgring track record holders and more raindrops on the lens. I'm sorry. Noisy cars are plenty. Loading nearly done. Brave in the rain. Thank you, Tony. Legend, this man. If you need transport, turbo transport, Tony, always on it. Oh, this is, this is grim. This is grim, but something interesting. Between this and these two, the least powerful car we brought out on this trip is an 830 horsepower Ferrari. 830, 850 with the upgrades, 1,360 on the 85. Um, that's quite the average actually is that an average literally of yeah it's an average of over a thousand horsepower all right zembo closed up we will be unloading that at the barn later today for now after driving the 296 and the zembo i'm now going to drive this as we go and inflate the tires and then get this long drive underway and here we go okay careful with the door against the ferrari now we're going to need to turn on the heaters because lots of water coming in so the tire pressures are extremely low, um, but yeah, Ooh, let's get warmed up. Let's get this on max. Right, out we go with grabby tires, grabby low pressure tires. I say out we go. Can we go through here? I'm going to find a way. That is quite narrow. This is one of those days where you can't even see where the parking spaces are marked because it's so wet down there. That is a bright color wrap on that M2. Uh, okay, we're gonna go out here. Yeah, this, this will do. It's not what you're supposed to do, but it will do. So we're going out here and first stop is to get these tire pressures sorted out. I'm not sure if it's gonna come up on the display in a moment. Um, normally you need to do a little bit of driving before it starts to give us the actual pressures, but there's that can't go and we're gonna go around here. Oh, it's so, so grim. This is the Nürburgring. There we go, look, check tires. Oh my gosh, 1.55 bar because of running some hot, hard, fast laps. And I'm kind of annoyed about this actually because I shared a video of doing some laps in this car and those were like the first laps, which were decent, but it was still a little bit slippy and sketchy. So it wasn't particularly quick. And then we did some more laps basically off camera and it was all dry and in the zone, having done about 10 laps or more over the weekend, and the pace started getting significantly quicker. It is what it is. We will have to come back and do it again because those were my first flat out laps with the Opus upgrades in this thing. But basically, this is the end. This is the end of the Nürburgring Boulevard, past the last roundabout and down towards somewhere where we can get some air in these tires. Good for the Autobahn and the onward drive from here. We have our tire pressures and we have a tire pressure inflator, tire inflator. To the right pressure um so let's get this all done no nope, that's not on properly there we go no it's still not on properly is that on nope there we go we are inflating got a lot of air pressure to put in these because they got very hot so we had to let a lot out for the laps away we go this is a little bit better as well on the dashboard take a look at this we've got some tire pressure which is what we needed it's funny that it still shows them yellow even though those are good numbers. That's where we want it to be. I get very confused about that. It probably needs a reset of some sort because they were so super low that it's still a little bit anxious about whether we've done something wrong. But the journey begins. It's about 700 kilometers in total from here back to the London area. So 450 miles, something like that. 
this car has done so many on this journey and I can't wait actually to just take a little hiatus from it, you know, hibernate it for a short period. It needs it. It really needs it. We'll talk more about that later on. Going past the TF entrance. It's not looking particularly busy today, understandably, because this kind of weather is not a whole lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun over the weekend, like I said, with both of these. In fact, just the differences between the cars driving this and the 296, each out onto the green hell, to see that this is so much more dialed in as a track car. I mean, it's track spec, right? Bucket seats, stiffer setup. Whereas the 296 has ballistic power in a straight line and a lot of it, believe me, but it's got that floatiness to it that comes with a ride that's more comfortable on the road. Like these cars are different. They're built for different things. They do different things. They do it in different ways. Um, but nonetheless, the car still is up on the top of the hill. We head on past. It's always fun being here, even if it's a little bit disorganized and chaotic. It's the best way to describe it. Things happening in ways you don't expect, at times you don't expect, when the track gets closed, when the weather does all sorts of bizarre and wonderful things. And you just have to roll with it and go with the flow and hope that it somehow all works out at the end of the day. We are now turning to join the Autobahn. And one thing to comment on, I suppose, is that throughout the rest of this trip, we had the winter tires on, limited to 270 kilometers an hour. So that was the max we were able to drive. We now have Cup 2s on the car, which theoretically are good to drive to the top speed of the car, which is about 330, so over 200 miles per hour. Unfortunately, however, despite the fact that there is a de-restricted section of autobahn in front of us, this weather is not very conducive to driving at 200 miles an hour, and nor is the amount of traffic. In fact, this is where you start the de-restricted autobahn, literally at the beginning, and it's really, really busy in front. Um, so we can head out and take it a little bit more easily. We're making some good progress, actually. We're well ahead of the time that we need to be at the Eurotunnel for our train this evening, which is nice. Should even get home in daylight because it's now that time of year and get the cars back to the barn. I'm not complaining about that. If all goes well, that is perfect. We are arriving at a traffic jam. And one funny thing in this car is that the button for the hazards is actually up here on the roof. And it takes a while to get used to that. When you know it's there, it's obviously super easy. But this explains why Tony actually took a different route. While we were inflating the tires, he set off. And I can see on the Global Telemetrics tracker app that I have for all of the cars, I could see where he's gone. So I knew he'd gone a different road. And I guess that's because he wanted to avoid this. So I don't know who's going to end up actually in front. Almost becomes a bit of a Top Gear race. Will it be the truck and trailer? Will it be the supercars taking the longer route on the autobahn with traffic? We'll find out. We nearly missed him, but Turbo Transport is there. We've overtaken unintentionally. He hasn't seen us. <laughs> oh well, we would have stopped if I had realized he was there, but now we're gonna be playing a game of leapfrog. <laughs> I think he just saw us. The fun of this is that we now drive back into the Netherlands and we've got the 296 as well. Now, of course, this car actually came here earlier on the trip when we went to visit Spiker Enthusiast. 296 hasn't, that didn't come here. Um, that thing is very pretty on the road. I mean, look at it. It's really quite small. It's almost surprisingly small. We probably should have gone into that petrol station. We kind of need a lunch break, but I guess we'll take the next one. It is what it is. On the right is the sign for Belgium. It's about 20 minutes of driving in the Netherlands before you enter Belgium when you take this route. But it's funny because just navigating and setting ways, obviously each time I do this crossing, it's always a slightly different route. But this is the way we've gone today and we need to stop and get some fuel because we are running very low. So next services. And then probably the trailer is going to come back past us, which will be funny. We're filling, but Turbo just went past. So we have the clip of Turbo Transport with the Zenvo while these two get a full tank of fuel. This one hadn't actually consumed a whole lot, so we will just make sure that's clicked off properly because these top mounted things are a little bit funny. Make sure that doesn't drip anywhere. This is one thing I find a little bit awkward. That could now drip on the paint, which you never want, even if you have PPL. And then we will grab ourselves a quick bite to eat and then play catch up again. M3 here as well from Germany. Probably not going home from the Nürburgring given that would be in the opposite direction, but we're back. Well, we're about to be back. Another two and a half hours from here to the Eurotunnel, two and a quarter, something like that. And a bit of a catch up 
with the trailer. So let's see if we can find it. This is not a great start. Chase the M3, but it's not an autobahn. Belgium. It's not stopping him. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Target is acquired. Mr. Turbo Transport. I tell you what, his wrap is looking on fire. There's a car between us, but one more downshift. And <laughs> we were doing so well. We nearly got the whole way through Belgium without traffic, or as we now have a bit of rain. It always happens. It's that ongoing thing and we found the one rain cloud in the, in the sky above us. There's nowhere else, it looks, actually over to the right, it actually looks pretty nasty, but anyway. It's basically all great, except for right where we are. And we arrive at France, right. Actually, the speed limits go up slightly now that we're in France, but the penultimate country of the day, because technically going back into England will be the last, but we are way ahead of schedule. And to be honest, that is one of the smoothest journeys I have ever had to get this far through Belgium. Uh, we had a little bit of traffic in Germany, but other than raindrops for about two minutes in Belgium, there was nothing else that caused inconvenience. We went round Antwerp rather than Brussels because the Brussels ring road can always be a disaster. And that was actually pretty smooth sailing. So I am not complaining. This is a nice, easy going wrap up to the end of a very long tour. And there are English or UK plates everywhere, I should say. Um, both of these guys, UK, well, Belgian truck, UK car in front of us. A lot of people going home at this time of year. Tunnel sous la Manche, the tunnel that goes under the channel to the United Kingdom, which is still always super convenient and actually quite nice when you arrive here at night. And we have a Ferrari in the mirror, a very dirty window and a very dirty mirror. But we'll head round and see how check-in is going to be because we are literally two and a half hours ahead of the booked crossing, which is not a bad thing, but let's hope there are some available slots on an earlier train. There's a GT4 RS. I suspect there are many GT4s, Porsches and whatnots around. Um, we have our number and I don't entirely know how this works because we've got different numbers and it's all sorts of busy. Haven't been here when it's so busy for a while. I'm just gonna park up and figure it out as we as we go this afternoon. That is an M3 that we have seen at the ring. I suspect there are many cars here that are coming back from the Nürburgring right now in this car park. We need to figure out where on earth we can actually go though. They make you do this whole loopy backwards and forwards thingy that just takes a lot of time to get back to somewhere you can stop. Look what is coming through here. Respect for that. MSRT with the GT3 RS on the trailer. The Transit Custom MSRT, like our pink van, with an i91.2 GT3 RS in Lizard Groon. I like that a lot. Oh look, M3, we saw that earlier. Coming past again. This is where everybody's basically hanging out waiting. There's an M3 CSL right here, which is really sweet. I have a uh, growing love for the E46s. Maybe one soon, never know. Although CSL pricing has flown through the roof. SMGs only in these, lip at the back, different front bumper, different interiors. Very, very cool. Look who it is. Mr. Turbo is actually ahead of us, which is an interesting one. I think he's heading to Passport before we are, which makes for an interesting challenge because if he arrives at the Museum before we do, he's gonna have a difficult time getting in. Um, so hopefully we can go in a minute. After a very, very long queue at Customs and Passport Control, we have luckily made it immediately straight through behind another MSRT van to the train, which I think is the same one that Turbo is on. I can't see him ahead of us, but I suspect he is on this exact same train, which would be quite amazing actually and quite convenient for the other end. So, it's going quite well, actually, considering how it looked like it was gonna go when we arrived here an hour and a half ago. Not quick, but it's okay. And in we go. You bought the train, as always, the tall vehicle carriages, which are suited to wider, low supercars, this kind of thing. And then we have a crossing that's 35 minutes and we come out the other side. It's that simple. Easy peasy. It's about to be go time. I've heard all of the engines in front of us turning on, so I'm assuming it's about to be go time. It's all a little bit chaotic. Whoa, it's getting warm in here as well. 
like the uh, air conditioning and train carriage wasn't necessarily working properly but we can remove the ticket from the front window I can hear a 296 rumbling behind and are we about to go off hopefully I can see daylight maybe patiently wait a few moments later now we can go <laughs> he's off right carefully does it even in here it's wider but there is still always a risk of getting it wrong with the wheel and these are nasty curves so that would be a complete and total mess anyway let's get back out into england where bizarrely i think it's sunny it's sunny in england that is quite something wow blue skies no way <laughs> lovely so where's turbo let's go hunt him down because he's definitely been in front of us our radios were working in the train and we could hear each other so catch up time look who it is fancy seeing that here who would have thought i wonder what's inside i wonder what it could be as yes, we've got the 296 passed on the right <laughs> wait it's mr tony turbo transport right causing all sorts of chaos here. As we completely coincidentally arrive in traffic, just while we're about to film something, I simply cannot possibly overestimate or overstate how bad the average quality of driving is in this country. The standard is atrocious. The amount of just people who don't understand lane discipline are in the wrong place. People who just drive erratically, chaotically, just make a total mess out of it. And I feel like if you go away to the continent on a road trip for like a weekend, you come back and it's it's like, wait, I didn't really remember this. But when you go on away for this long and you come back here after so long away, it's absolutely shocking. It's genuinely so bad to drive in this country. Not helped by being quite a small country with a lot of cars on the roads and very congested as you see. It's like, like this all the time, you know packed roads, unlike the auto routes in France or the autobahn in Germany, where often you have long stretches which are way more open than this. Obviously the auto routes have tolls and the autostradas in Italy do and the roads in Spain do as well, whereas here we're lucky that it's part of the yearly tax that you pay to drive. But yeah, chaotic. You know, here you move to, move to lane one, keep left unless overtaking. People don't really get that very much. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm sorry to sound like I'm whinging. It's just when you've been away, like I said, driving on foreign roads for so long and you come back here and you're suddenly dealing with this again, it's a real shock to the system. It's really like, wow, is that what it's like at home? I've forgotten. And back at the garage, these two inside looking absolutely filthy. One more still to unload and bring in after an extended period away. But I tell you what, each time coming back here is surreal. We have a fraction of a 914 up on the Benpack Auto Stacker. That's actually quite fun. There will be more updates with the 914 Progress Yorkshire car restoration very soon. But each time coming home is like a feast for the eyes. I love the color going on here, all of the cars, everything looking absolutely insane but it does feel like a long time ago that i set off from the schmuseum with the gt black series and my word this car has been through a lot since then a lot of miles a lot of places we headed down initially to switzerland for the ice to drive the rotor zau with mercedes amg out on the frozen lake taking this out for a few laps as well but we had actually stopped on the way down at zondervunch in Germany to visit Porsche to collect my friend's 911 Dakar in his military spec to match the Urukan Storato that we had collected in the middle of last year also. But at the ice, we went supercar spotting. We found a Yesco buried in the snow, literally completely covered because there was so much snow falling and driving around with this thing was just the first 
part of the adventure. We've had quite a few snow days with it along the way, but we continued from there to Italy to go to near Rome, in fact, to drive the Ferrari Roma Spider, a future Schmiemobile, to get my first time behind the wheel in the Ferrari Roma convertible. We stopped at Pagani on the way back to spec a Utopia to go for a bit of a tour around the factory for settling in to do the specification in the configuration studio to build up my dream spec where we then went to visit my friends, the Saturn crew, to drive the Audi R8 GT that they recently took delivery of, a car, of course, close to my heart, having owned an R8, but to get an experience with Alex driving in that, before visiting the truly breathtaking Low Collection, the Nationales Auto Museum in Germany, one of the most impressive collections of cars I've ever seen in my entire life. Everything in there that you could imagine from so many different eras, so many different cars. We also went to visit Brabus, Sven took us on a tour around Brabus to see the entire assembly operation, everything that's going on at Brabus to create their masterpiece cars, the interiors, exteriors, all of the different work that they put together before a first visit to the new showroom of Jasper from Spiker Enthusiast to see the different Spiker cars. I actually hopped out with him as well after a tour of the full showroom and the workshop in the double 12 S that was the prototype, or rather I should say the homologation version of the Le Mans car at absolutely mad machine. I then had a first drive ever in the entire world with RFX collection of the Aston Martin Valor, a car that I have loved since the Victor was introduced, the Valor being the celebration of 110 years and getting to drive that, when we then set off from there to take a ferry up towards Norway. This car got a puncture, seems to be a bit of a standard thing along the way, but in Norway I drove the Zyrus LP 1080. Hurricane on steroids, twin turbo, absolute mad machine, limited edition. And we also took a look as well around the assembly, around the production for that, before heading to yet more ice to catch up with Knut 917 CFK to see his 917K that we drove on the frozen lake which is a completely unbelievable thing to see that sliding around, to hop on board, to squeeze in and to somehow make it happen. Totally awesome. We also then drove all the way. We drove this up via the Atlantic Ocean Road, a road I had always wanted to drive. And along the way made this the Schmiemobile that's driven the most miles in my ownership of any car ever. But we did have some tires that we needed to change. The curse struck again of yet another puncture that we had to get fixed. So big thanks to everybody who helped with that along the way before we ended at the AMG experience in Ayaplog. Sliding this thing around on some special for the purpose studded tires in the fitment of the AMG GTS, but a straight wheel and tire swap to experience this in a way you don't normally expect. Sliding on ice, totally crazy. Plus a visit even further north to the Arctic Circle in Jokmok to take this up to the Arctic so far from where we had been down in Rome. We then stopped with Motocon on the way back down to drive the ex-Sultan of Brunei Lamborghini LM002, the off-roading monster converted into a station wagon, an estate. We then, of course, crossed over to Denmark to visit Zenvo to pick up the car in Prastu, take it to the classic car house and to enjoy driving it in its home country before a very special visit to the selected car collection to see a room of hypercars never seen before on camera along with driving some special things like the Ferrari Daytona SP3 and also getting to see the special SLR portion of the collection. But believe me, there's a lot more still to come. I'm very excited about. We then headed back into Germany, took this car to Opus to catch up with Lucas to do an inspection basically ahead of driving it for some pretty hard Nürburgring laps to go over the car, look at it underside and all around, run through the software and some of the glitches and things that had popped up along the way before it was time for some laps to get back onto the green hell with the AMG GT Black Series to push on, to have some fun with it, to drive it as intended before, of course, the journey we've just had to bring it back home to get back home with this thing that now has over 50,000 kilometers, a little over 30,000 miles on the clock, and yet it's still running flawlessly. It's done so much along the way, and we probably need a full update when I can take in everything that we need to do with it, but that's been fun. Of course, I've also driven the 296 GTS on the Nürburgring as well, which was amazing to, I guess, start some of the journey with this. I know it hasn't done masses of different things to date. It's probably about 2,000 kilometers on it. That's about, 1200 miles in so in total but i think we should pull in the zembo 
We should pull the Zenvo back in here to the museum. <laughs> Out it comes, so we can be helpful and manually unfold the mirror as soon as it's passed. There we go. Done. Touchdown. Back in the United Kingdom. Back ready to go inside the museum. I'm sorry it's got dark, but in a moment we shall get this back in. Lift going up and off the ramps for now. You can tell it's cold outside. Brad brings this in. Welcome home, Zenvo TSRS. Welcome back to the Schmuseum. It's good to have it here. Let me slightly guide him to line up where we want it. A little bit more that way and straight. Straight back, that's crazy. And stop right there. Wow, actually we're gonna pull it forward to touch. I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> I don't think you've seen me yet. I'm gonna come forwards just to make it lined up nice and neat, but all of the cars are obviously gonna get washed. So they're gonna proper clean up. That'll do. Lovely, tidied, neat, and looking nice. It goes without saying, it's been a long day. It's always a long day when you're on the road like this, but even more so when you've been on the road for such a massive journey, quite literally a dream supercar road trip for winter. The amount of time we've spent in snowy places, a little rainy places along the way, given the time of year, but to really, use a car like the GT Black Series as intended and to throw in so many amazing visits in different places and to collect the Zembo again and to have that in Nürburgring, to drive the 296 also at the Nürburgring. It's just been unbelievable. But having been away for so long, there is also therefore a lot to catch up on here. A lot of work at the Schmuseum itself. We're gonna be cracking on with a few more things. Updates with patches potential new arrivals and future Schmemobile specifications to talk about and get locked in, and so many other videos and exciting things to share with you guys in the next period before something from here is heading a long way away. I can't remember if I've said what at this point. That might be enough of a clue for now. I'm just really, really exhausted. It's been the most amazing journey. It's been the most amazing road trip. And I'd like to thank every one of you who has followed along and everyone who has been part of it in any form at the places we've done meetups, who's been part of the videos and different opportunities as well. This has been really, 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 really good. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching guys. We made it back home with all of the cars. Everything has gone to plan. I can't quite believe it, but I'm looking forward to seeing you for plenty more pretty, awesome fun very soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Cheers.